What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, you know I appreciate it. All that information is in the description box below. Make sure you go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks. Subscribe over there and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now let's get into this topic. All right, thanks for clicking on the video. Hope everyone is doing well. Now, this video is for educational purposes. So as I approach these topics with respect, I need you all to please, please, please be respectful in the comment section. Thank you. Now, this next story comes out of Florida. Take a breath. <laughs> of course it comes out of Florida, Dawson. Doesn't all the crazy stories come out of Florida? Y'all leave my state alone, please. A South Florida mother who loves entertaining, as a matter of fact, she wants to be an entertainer. She's back in the news again, but this time it's not for her talent. Manachika Daniels was arrested after her daughter told Florida Department of Children and Family that her mother disciplined her with the cord from a hairdryer because she was acting bad and not listening. Now, investigators wrote in the affidavit that when they checked the child's body, they did find scars. Manachika Daniels now faces first-degree felony charges of child abuse with great bodily harm, torture, and a second-degree felony charge of child neglect. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Dawson, you can't believe everything Department of Children and Family says. You know DCF is trying to break up the family unit. They're trying to break up. Let me tell you something. I work for Department of Children and Family. Why do you think I do my show like this? And I'm still a social worker now. That's why I'm so passionate about the kids because I know what they go through. And I'm with Department of Children and Family on this particular case because this particular mother was arrested before for leaving this child in a car while she went to work at a strip club. Now, I have a lot I want to say on this topic, but I'm going to let you all watch this news clip so you get a little history on this mother. And I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. And you all know me. I'm Dawson, and I won't hold back. Now at six, a South Florida mother who chose her work over her child's safety is paying the price. Police say the woman left her three-year-old child in a car for hours while she went into work. Hello, everyone. I'm Trina Robbins. And I'm Juwan Schrader. Good evening. That child later found roaming the parking lot. NBC6 reporter Marissa Bagg is live in Lauder Hill with more on the charges that mother is now facing. Marissa. Trina and Jawan, so far, mom facing just one count of child neglect. She's accused of leaving her three-year-old daughter in this car right here, this black Toyota Corolla, for three hours in the middle of the night. All the while, police say she was actually working at the Vegas Cabaret Club that you see there at the other end of the parking lot. Once we looked in the vehicle, we noticed that there were toys, a car seat, things to keep a child occupied, but... The one thing that we didn't see was apparent. Lieutenant Michael Santiago worked the overnight shift Wednesday when a passerby found a three-year-old girl crying and wandering alone through a Lauder Hill parking lot. The little girl actually brought us back to the car where she was. Uh, we looked at the car. There was a window cracked in the back just for ventilation. Uh, the, the front doors of the vehicle were, were locked and the car wasn't running. According to the police report, the child was left alone for three hours in the back seat of this Toyota Corolla. She was able to get out of the car by herself, which was parked close to busy University Drive. Police say her mother, Manachika Daniels, came out of the Vegas Cabaret Club after working a shift at 2.30 in the morning. Apparently surprised police were there. Some of the story and the information that she was giving was somewhat uh, suspect as to we were on a scene for an extended period of time, yet she wasn't there, and it was still, for us, it wasn't jiving at the time. We tried to speak with someone at the club and caught up with one employee as she went to get the mail. don't know anything. I only work there two days a week. Daniels is now in jail, charged with child neglect. According to her attorney, the toddler is being cared for by an aunt. Police say the girl looked well and in good spirits, but they shudder to think what could have happened. And it's dark, and a three-year-old child is very, very small in stature, and anything could have happened. Anything could have happened to that child. So Daniels has no prior criminal history, but Lauder Hill police are looking into whether she may have left her daughter alone in the car before. Reporting live in Lauder Hill, Marissa Bag, NBC6 News. 
All right, y'all, let's go in. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Lieutenant Santiago and the people who came to uh, that little girl's aid while she was wandering around that parking lot, a strip club, y'all. Come on, think about that. Three years old. While mama and there <laughs> left the baby in the car at a, next to a busy highway. Anybody in Fort La in Lauder Hill, y'all know where uh, Vegas Cabaret at. Anything could have happened to that child. Now, the news lady said that they don't believe this is the first time that child was left alone. And I want to know in the comments, do you all think this is the first time that Manichika Daniels left her child alone? I don't I don't think it is. I think she's done this before. And even it went, while she went to work at that strip club. How I feel about this particular case, when you have a mother or a father, when you have a person, a guardian, who constantly puts a child in harm's way, you should lose custody of that child. So what are you saying, Dawson? I'm saying that the DCF needs to put that child in the aunt's custody or that child needs to go into foster care because the woman was in the news for this particular story. Now she's in the news for disciplining her daughter with a hairdryer cord. What's the next story going to be? What's the next news story going to be about this woman? You know, I usually don't say this, but I know a lot of them still, they watch my show, a lot of my old colleagues and, you know, some of my friends who still work with Department of Children and Family and others with other social work agencies and some people down at the courthouse, guardian ad litems in Miami-Dade County and in Broward County. I know people who work in the system. You all, y'all, do something about this, please. Now, they'll call me and say, Dawson, oh, what's going on? We saw your show, man, blah, 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 blah. But honestly, I need you all not to allow this child to get back in harm's way. Because what's the next news story going to be? Now, I know some people going to say, Dawson, you shouldn't do that. You should you breaking up the black family reunion. And I'm glad y'all want to say that. I'm glad because I've been waiting. Oh, my God, I've been waiting years to say this, especially to some black people. I'm black, so I'm talking to y'all. A lot of the conscious black people, some of them, not all, they'll say that DCF and the foster care system and all of that is tearing up the black family unit. Well, let me say this from a black person who worked in that particular uh, setting. If you all feel so strongly about that and how DCF is tearing down the black family unit and they just want to take people's children out of their house, if you all want to go down there and adopt some of these black children who predominantly make up most of the foster kids and especially the ones who don't age out of this, who age out of the system, why don't you all go adopt them? You can't tell me nothing when I had to sit there as a DCF worker with mostly black children on my caseload being the daddy them telling you just like my daddy my daddy don't come see me my mama don't care about me i'm gonna age out of foster care system all of that mess these hotel conscious people speak it means nothing to me go adopt some of those black children if you really want to make the black family unit strong again i think y'all are silly when you all say that and many of us who are, who are working in social services, we think you all are silly when we see these children who don't get adopted and they age out. And we only have a short amount of time to get these children prepared for life because when they turn 18, society doesn't want to hear that you grew up in foster care. They don't want to hear that your mom and daddy didn't want you. Oh, this Come on, y'all, don't bother me with that. That's why I am so passionate when it comes to the children. I had to sit there with many other people in the DCF, judges and attorneys and guardian ad litems, uh, case managers, therapists, psychiatrists, all these people, everybody who makes up working with those foster parents. People would come in and mentor the kids. And all we were trying to do, at least mo most of us, we were trying to do it. I know there are some hiccups within the system trying to give these kids a normal life. Kids who've been through abuse, neglect, abandonment, the trauma, the pain, the stuff they saw. You all take care of the kids. Please take care of these kids. Now, I know some people may say, well, Dawson, with all the stuff you just said, it looks like you would should want, man, if she could have keep her daughter. No, I don't. Because the next story I may do on Manashika and her daughter Y'all, I don't even want to think about it. 
I want Broward County, Child Net up there, wherever y'all who has this case, y'all make the right decision on this. Let that aunt have custody of this child. And for whoever's on this case, you know, the judges, the attorneys, the guardian ad litems, case managers, I'm going to make it easy for y'all. I know what she needs. She can have supervised visitation, only supervised visitation from now on with her daughter. After she's completed a psychological evaluation, she needs to go into parenting classes, not the three-month parenting classes. She needs it for a year. And she also needs to go into anger management and, you know, just throw drug, uh, what is it? She has to get uh, tested every uh, twice a month. I made it easy for y'all, but she won't get her child back. She will have supervised visitation until the child gets 18 and also throw in therapy. You all know I'm an advocate for therapy, throw in therapy. She needs therapy. Now you all know I I got a heart for the kids, y'all. That's why I have my YouTube show. Take care of those kids. Now I I'm, I'm praying for Manashika's daughter that she's in good hands and will stay in good hands until she gets 18. And I know some people may say, well, Dawson, the foster care system is not the best. Things happen, and I know that. And trust me, I've had my arguments with some foster parents who had some of my clients in their uh, homes. I understand that. And like I said before, the system does have hiccups. There's some stuff in there we're trying to straighten out as well. But when you have stories like this, and parents. Or a parent just keeps putting their child in harm's way. Something has to be done to protect that little girl. Now I'm off of this story. Go off in the comments. Let me know what you think about this story. Go off on me if you want to. It's all good. I'm still going to keep reporting. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. But most importantly, please, please, please take care of those children. Peace.